the first video we're looking at today comes to my comes from my friend Michael Jones, uh, otherwise known as my apologist man crush, Michael Jones, inspiring philosophy. He and I have a bit of a mutual admiration society going. Uh, if you don't follow Michael on TikTok, I think he's great on TikTok because he doesn't really deal with atheists as much. He deals with Christians who are making Michael look silly. Anyway, but today I wanted to cover a, a, a short video that he did. Um, and I think that it means something other than what he intended it to mean. This particular video was intended to speak to mythicists. Stitch this with a fact so ridiculous you didn't believe it until you looked it up yourself. There isn't a single eyewitness account of Jesus' life. Okay, but this is not ridiculous or surprising to historians. So, okay, Michael. This may not be surprising to a historian, particularly a historian who isn't necessarily a believer. Uh, I think anyone, any figure from the first century, it would make sense that there isn't... And we'll get to that, that there isn't a lot of evidence, even the leaders of the day. But the reason this was surprising, don't scold it for being surprising to him, because that sounds like a man who grew up in the church and being told over and over again, as I was, by pastors, by Sunday school teachers, by seminary teachers, that there are eyewitnesses to Jesus and that we do hear them. So... It, it it should, I think it's up to the job of the Christians. Christians need to do a better job of letting people know that that's what the fact is. Because when people like me find this out for the first time, and particularly if they find it out from an atheist or from a TikTok channel, it's going to be disturbing to them. So the fact that this may well be uh, established and unsurprising and, and blasé to a historian doesn't mean that the majority of the Christian congregation shouldn't be shocked by this news and admission that we have no eyewitness testimony about Jesus. First, a case can be made by arguing from scholars like Craig Keener or Richard Bauckham that the Gospels of Matthew and John were eyewitness accounts, and the Gospels of Mark and Luke were based on reports from eyewitnesses. I did like that phrasing, a case could be made. I don't think it's a compelling case that Matthew wrote Matthew, that John wrote John, that Luke wrote Luke, that Mark wrote Mark, or even if you assume those are different names, that those are in any way tied to eyewitness testimony. But, but thankfully, Mike, uh, I, of course a case can be made. You can make a case for pretty much anything. You can make a case for, a case for and against pineapple on pizza, for example. Uh, sure, make a case. But um, Mike's going to go on and, and accept this, which is great. But let's just say they're wrong for the sake of argument. This still wouldn't be a problem for historians, because we don't have any surviving eyewitness accounts for most historical people from that time period. Take Hannibal of Carthage, who crossed the Alps with an army and elephants. Okay, so Hannibal of Carthage, a uh, similar figure from the time period, was a leader. Um, one thing we... So we have two major accounts of Hannibal both of which are from well after his death. I want to say a century or more. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not a super expert on Hannibal. But what we do have from his era, for example, are coins. Coins of Hannibal on one side, with the elephant on the other, his famous elephant uh, escapades. If Michael wants to talk about this in terms of historical Jesus, which is not what I'm specifically interested in, but if that's what you want to go by... Uh, then some coins of Jesus would be great, or mentioning Jesus in lists of rulers would be great, things of which we have for Hannibal. So this isn't a purely comparable case. We have no surviving eyewitness accounts of his life and deeds. We don't have any eyewitness accounts for the life of the high priest Caiaphas, or Joser, John the Baptist, Judas the Galilean, or Honey the Circle Drawler. Oh. So I'd never heard of Honey the Circle... Honey the Circle Drawer. Who, if someone's not signing up for a Twitter handle, Honey the Circle Drawer, right now, someone should be. Maybe a YouTube handle, Honey the Circle Drawer. Uh, I had to look him up. Honey was uh, also a first century figure, a Jewish man who spent a lot of time outside of the Jewish walls praying for rain. And there's a legend about him 
uh, in particular one time and people coming to him and he in the particular famine stretch he he managed he drew a big circle and stood in the middle and then asked for it to rain and god made it rain a little bit and he didn't like that so he asked god for more rain and then it was too much rain and then we got to the goldilocks zone of finally he asked for exactly the right amount of rain anyway that's honey the circle drawer the jews who lived during that time period the one who we have the most information on is jesus so when put in context this is not odd or ridiculous most ancient texts from that time period have simply been lost to history. All right. So if Michael is addressing mythicists, great. I, I don't disagree that the argument from silence is never a good one, but it gets stronger or weaker based on whether you would expect there to be the evidence that's missing, whether it would be actually how strongly would be expected or not. And for someone to expect that a first century preacher from Galilee would leave a big mark in the historical record is, is probably overreaching, especially again, given that there were more famous, more roundly, roundly famous people than Jesus was at the time who also didn't have much evidence. But that said, if you are the type of evangelical Christian who has been told all your life that we have all this great eyewitness account. This is a big admission. This is basically admitting that the first-hand accounts we have are suspect, even by historians. What do you think? Did Was Michael being a little bit blasé about the fact that we don't have historical evidence for Jesus? Do you think that a Christian would want to know this. Do you think a Christian who watched Mike's TikTok would have been surprised by this news? Let me know in the chat and let me know in the comments.